Hi, my name is Dr. Saif and uh, I have created few MCQ discussion for you to prepare for DM critical care exams and also various uh, world level exams like EDIC part 1 and uh, also the American board uh, recertification, Canadian board recertification exams in critical care and uh, that is the whole idea how to help you with this busy schedule during this corona pandemic era and uh, with this thought in my mind I have created a video series on neurocritical care so let's begin an 87 year old man a known case of ischemic heart disease he developed uh, ST elevation MI followed by sudden cardiac arrest for which CPCR was performed for 40 minutes until ROSC was achieved he underwent cardiac catheterization and placement of a bare metal stent into left circumflex coronary artery. Post cardiac arrest 24 hours of cooling was also implemented. And uh, post arrest day 6 in ICU uh, neurology opinion was sought for the prognostication. Uh, which of the following is the most correct statement? A. The most accurate prognostic test for poor neurological outcome is encephalopathy. B. A magnetic resonance imaging of brain show uh, hyper intense area on uh, high uh, diffusion weighted imaging which can assist with the prognosis. C. After 5 days if corneal reflexes are absent anticipated neurological recovery will be zero. Or D. The neuron specific enolase is not affected by cooling and can be used for prognosis at day 6 post cardiac arrest. So the most accurate statement is B. Uh, MRI of brain shows hyper intense area on diffusion weighted imaging which can assist with the prognosis. So this is the most accurate statement over here. So let's uh, discuss this. So the most commonly used predictors of severe hypoxemic encephalopathy include the bilateral absence of corneal and pupillary reflexes which are brain stem reflexes and uh, bilateral absence of N20 waves of short latency SSEPs that is somatosensory evoked potential, high blood concentration of NSE that is non neuron specific enolase, unfavorable patterns on EEG that is electroencephalogram and signs of diffuse HIE on CT or MRI of the brain. So ideally uh, neurological predictor should be 100% specific to avoid falsely pessimistic prediction. So it should not be like uh, you do some of one of the tests and uh, decide that patient is brain dead. So that's, that's wrong. It should be 100% specific means that there should not be any false positive okay. test. So ideally neurological predictor should be 100% specific. However, with the most robust neurological predictor uh, we, we perform, it's not 100% specific and for this reason the current guidelines recommend multi predictor evaluation of uh, neuroprognosis okay so combination of predict predictors is uh, advised so this is a very good article uh, which was published in 2018 in critical care journal by sandroni et al and uh, this clarifies this article clarifies so many illusions so many uh, misconception myths about uh, neuroprognostication after cardiac arrest and they have come up with uh, various uh, concepts uh, during cooling you should not be using any clinical criteria to prognosticate that will be wrong so after maybe 24 to 48 hours of cooling is uh, completely stopped and patient has been rewarmed you should be uh, prognosticating the patients okay Another fact which I have found very useful is the EEG alone is not a reliable method of prognostication. So you cannot say patient is brain dead. Another fact is that NSE level that is neuron specific enolase which is a biomarker of neuroprognostication, prognostication should be at least more than 33 microgram per liter to predict a poor outcome. But again uh, cooling may severely affect this level and even more than 100 uh, the levels more than 100 may have a good outcome so you cannot rely this criteria if the cooling is going on. 
So only uh, objective uh, way of determining the neuroprognostication after 3 to 5 days of cardiac arrest is the MRI. So uh, if the patient had cardiac arrest and then you, what you do is the target temperature management that is cooling or controlled temperature, avoid, avoiding the fe fever for at least for uh, one day and after that you start rewarming the patient. Okay. So after rewarming and from day 3 to day 5 you can administer various tests of prognostication. No predictor is 100% specific. You should use the multimodal prognostication whenever possible. So that is what this article says and uh, that's the answer. So objectively you can do MRI, you can do EEG, you can do SSCP. Uh, so many things can be done but always rule out uh, uh, the uh, sedative part. The patient should not be in hypothermia especially when you want to use uh, uh, N, uh, NSC and when you want to use uh, EEG as a predictor of neurological outcome. Now the second question, a 64 year old woman is admitted to ICU with SAH of grade 5. External ventricular drain was placed and after day 8 there was no improvement in GCS. Her examination is as follows, pupil 6 mm dilated and non-reactive, absence uh, of oculocephalic reflex, absent uh, corneal reflex, absent facial grimace and absent gag, absent cough. So there is nothing and only evoked motor response is the minimal triple flexion in the bilateral legs. An apnea test was positive. Which of the following is most true? A. Repeat the apnea test. B. The patient does not meet criteria for brain death as motor response is present. C. An ancillary test like EEG, cerebral angiogram or nuclear scan should be performed to diagnose the brain death. And D. The current examination is consistent with brain death. So what should be your answer over here? Which is the most true answer? So answer is D. The current examination is consistent with brain death because patient doesn't have any uh, reflex, brainstem reflex, okay, and uh, apnea test already, already been performed, which is positive. So only one apnea test is enough for uh, making a diagnosis of brain death. Main clinical criteria for brain death are coma and absence of brainstem reflex and apnea. So these three things, okay, and no ancillary tests are required if. Uh, the full clinical examination is consistent with brain death. So this is very very important statement that ancillary tests are not required except in few cases where the uh, where the um, patient's relative are requesting for it or uh, if there is uh, controversy between two physicians regarding the brain death. So you can administer ancillary tests like a, a nuclear scan or four way angiography and all but otherwise they are not required. So this is the third question in neurocritical care MCQ series. A 24 year old male is admitted to ICU following a traumatic brain injury. He was intoxicated with friends when he was hit on left side of the head and did have a brief loss of consciousness. 10 hours later and he became unresponsive and brought to emergency department by an ambulance. On examination, he had fixed dilated pupils and no movement on painful stimulation. BP was 180 over 110 mm of mercury and heart rate was 50, 56 per minute. The respiration was noisy with 10 breaths per minute. The trachea was immediately intubated without sedative or paralytic. A head computed tomography was performed. A 1.5 cm right sided subdural hemorrhage with 1.2 cm of right to left middle midline shift including uncle herniation was found and there were no brain stem responses, no spontaneous breathing and no movement to painful stimulation. An apnea test could not be performed due to immunodynamic instability. The patient blood pressure was not good, so apnea test was not performed. However, position, uh, positron emission uh, tomography scan of brain showed no activity in the brain stem and cortex. What is the most correct statement regarding the patient? The patient does not meet brain death criteria because the ancillary test uh, does not support a diagnosis of brain death. The patient does not meet brain death criteria because he was unable to complete an apnea test. 
see the patient does not meet the brain death criteria because his clinical examination is consistent with this and did not need an ancillary test study or d the patient does not meet brain death criteria because the clinical examination is consistent with this and the ancillary study support this diagnosis so which one is the most uh, correct statement out of four so i think the d uh, is uh, the correct statement because we have performed the ancillary test and it does not uh, support the diagnosis of brain death however the clinical examination is consistent with the diagnosis of brain death so in explanation i could say that uh, these are the guidelines uh, published in neurology journal way back in 2010 evidence based guideline for determining the brain death in adults it has a very uh, good article and so it says that the diagnosis of brain death is primarily clinical ancillary tests are just ancillary or adjunctive should not be regarded as the absolute criteria for making the diagnosis of brain death okay and they are performed when the clinical criteria cannot be applied reliably i have said in the previous mcq also so we have discussed uh, three mcqs now this is the fourth one a 76 year old man on known case of coronary artery disease and parkinson disease is admitted to emergency department for the management of community acquired pneumonia he is intubated and is started on broad spectrum antibiotics later he was shifted to icu his chest x ray shows a remarkable resolution of consolidation spontaneous breathing and awakening prior was started on icu day 5 and he was awake and able to communicate with the relatives on day 6 night of day 6 he developed GI intolerance wide with a high RTS rate more than 500 ml for which resident doctor prescribed injection metoclopramide 10 mg IV bolus on day 7 he developed high grade fever rigidity and altered sensorium what is the most likely etiology for this condition this is a very interesting question so let's go with mcqs so uh, the options are multi drug resistant sepsis neuroleptic malignant syndrome parkinson hyperreflexia syndrome or serotonin syndrome so answer is patient may have developed the neuro neuroleptic malignant syndrome because patient is a case of parkinson disease probably has not received the drug for parkinson during the icu stay on day 7 rather he was prescribed metoclopramide and mg iv and that is a d2 antagonist and probably has led to neuroleptic malignant syndrome the multi drug resistant sepsis is this possibility in this case which can be result in high grade fever and altered sensorium on day 6 however rigidity is not a feature of sepsis so this option is ruled out neuroleptic malignant syndrome is characterized by fever rigidity obtundation and autonomic instability it is related to a sudden decrease in dopaminergic signaling which may be caused by use of neuroleptics or non neuroleptics with anti dopaminergic drug which is the case in this question however in the parkinson hyperreflexia syndrome or phs is a rare but potentially fatal complication seen in parkinson's disease which is uh, which has a close resemblance with the uh, nms uh, if the nms is not an option in this question i would go for parkinsonism hyperreflexia syndrome serotonin syndrome on the other hand is a potentially life threatening adverse drug reaction occurs in patient on serotonin agonist medication okay uh, and medications like antidepressant anxiolysis analgesia analgesics anti emetics can cause this kind of uh, syndrome so this is uh, serot- serotonergic drugs okay or serotonin agonist medic- medications which can cause serotonin syndrome